Hello everyone, we're going to start today just by reviewing what an equivalent fraction is. So if we look at our pictures here, we have one half shaded in on this one and two fourths shaded in on this one. And these fractions are equivalent because even though they are different fractions, they still represent the same amount. And this comes in handy, especially in times where you're sharing food. So if we think of these as pizza, this one could be me sharing with one other person. But then I would need to know an equivalent fraction if I had more friends come over and all of a sudden I have the same amount of food, but now I have more people to share it with. Last time, we found equivalent fractions using multiplication. Today, we're going to find them using division. This is exactly what your page looks like, and the instructions say, to find equivalent fractions, you can divide a fraction by another fraction that is equivalent to one. And when you see that it is equivalent to one, that means that it's the same on the top and it's not the same on the bottom. The page that you have today has all of the starting fractions filled in for you and what you're dividing by. So all you need to find is what the equivalent fraction would be. So for this first one, we've got six divided by two, which is going to get us to three. Then we can do our denominator. And now we have 12 divided by two, which gets us to six. So now what this says is that six twelfths is equivalent to three sixths. It is also important to remember that when you're dividing, you're taking the smaller number and you're trying to see how many times it would fit inside of the larger number. We can check that our answer is correct by using a picture. So if we use these fraction bars, three out of six pieces, so three sixths, is in fact equivalent to six out of 12 pieces, which would be six twelfths. Because if I count here, I've got six shaded in and there are three shaded in here and they are the exact same amount. The last thing that is important to note is that if these numbers weren't filled in and you needed to decide what number to divide by, you need to pick a number that can go inside of both your numerator and your denominator evenly. You don't want to have any remainders left over. So if we look at the example we just did, two fit inside of six evenly, there was nothing left over. And then again, two fit inside of 12 evenly, we didn't have any remainders. That is important to keep in mind. 